Manon Fleer and Reinder Nermador, Netherlands Volleyball Royalty. Reinder, an Olympian with European goals both indoor and beach, Manon, a European Championship MVP who starred in Netherlands, Italy, Japan and Azerbaijan. Now their playing days are over, they have a great life with a great family, so I called to check in and find out more. Hi guys, can you hear me? Hey. Yeah, perfect. Ah, yes. <laughs> oh, I love it when it works. Um, so I'm giving you a call because these are weird times uh, and I'm just checking in to make sure you guys are doing all right and to, to spread a bit of love and positivity. So with so much going on, how are you guys holding up? Oh, we, we are kind of busy at home, uh, in and around the house, actually. Uh, we have uh, every day a lot of uh, yeah, small things to do, tasks, and, uh, and we got two young kids, so busy enough, actually. Yeah, I suppose a, a little bit of time at home is, uh, is a welcome thing. Because what, what's the youngest now? Like six months? Would, is life too different now to what it, what it would have been anyway with the little one around? Yeah, Daniel is uh, six months now. Um, we're already quite used to the fact that we have two now, you know, we have a family of four. And I think also because we are home now, we have a lot of like uh, straight schedules. Like usually he just has, has to adapt to if Milou needs to school, uh, to go to school or Reiner's working or I'll be going somewhere. But now we're stick to us. Yeah, stick to our houses. And uh, yeah, it's, it's normal. It's getting normal for of us. Yeah. Getting used to it, actually. Yeah. Ah, it's it's never normal for a life of two pro athletes in a house. There's no such thing as normal. <laughs> um, how how different is it though? Now you're a you're a family of four. It must have been sort of five six years ago. So frantic with the with the peer review. Has it is it still frantic or is it calmed down a little bit? Uh, Reiner's life was pretty uh, pretty hectic. He's an assistant uh, head coach of the beach volleyball guys, so he's traveling a lot. Um, yeah. uh, so that's the same actually like what you were used to do yeah so I was still busy till um, what was it uh, I came back from a tournament in Doha actually yeah. <coughs> and uh, the day after um, when we came back it was like uh, almost semi lockdown first in Holland mm -hmm. uh, but from that moment on uh, I didn't go to work anymore and uh, it's a while since you've been away if you weren't back home now, where would you be in the world? Do you know? Uh, I'm, put, I'm getting to put a pacifier back. Actually, yeah, no, I, sure. I lost a little bit track of it, but uh, what was the plan? We had Mexico after, uh, and then China, but I don't, maybe it was in between Mexico and China now, yeah. And how are you, how are you finding it? Is there, is there anything you sort of you sort of disappointed? Does it feel like unfinished business in terms of the beach volleyball, or are you kind of just happy to be home with your your wife and your kids and having uh, this valuable yeah. time? It's a little bit two sided. Like mm -hmm. I'm I'm frustrated, uh, but more for the for the guys for the players. So we work with the two men teams yeah. uh, because we had working uh, the whole winter uh, on on uh, new stuff, uh, new things to to uh, implement in in the game. And uh, we were very eager to see how that would uh, how that would uh, go in the, in the tournaments, and, uh, and we played only one tournament, and then uh, there was a complete lockdown. So, and now probably we have to wait till we have another winter and another months of months of training, uh, which is um, uh, yeah, especially I think for the guys uh, very frustrating because uh, yeah, they were eager to play, and now uh, they have to. To yeah, to train again. Big time. Oh, there's the there's the man of the house. Look, got yeah. the pacifier back in. Yeah, he's tired, but not ready to sleep. I think, but probably he will be a couple of minutes. He'll be fast asleep there, listening to me making him <laughs> nod off, sing him a little lullaby. I am not singing him a little lullaby. <laughs> <laughs> we do. So are you are you glad to have him home a little bit more at the moment then? Definitely, definitely. We planned a holiday in the, the first week of April, mm. uh, but unfortunately, yeah, we had to cancel that, or that was cancelled <laughs> for us. Uh, and at first, I was kind of disappointed by it, 
but of course you know it's uh it's yeah it's better for everyone uh and then i thought i thought like oh it's just what i want because the weather here is good we the whole family is together yeah and uh yeah we have a lot of free time so i don't miss the, the holiday where were you supposed to be going portugal oh beautiful part of the world but yeah, you live in a beautiful there. part of the world too there, but never for a holiday so uh yeah so do you mention you mentioned family there and um in the uk we have got this perhaps slightly false uh, image of the dutch being one big massive happy family simply because the only time we see you in groups is during sports tournaments and it doesn't matter what the sport is there is an orange army just just bringing the party of the most enthusiastic supporters if we can start to take a little bit of a trip down down memory lane there um you've both performed and and had success in front of those supporters and that big orange family what's that like yeah it reminds you of home maybe and um it, i think it all started with soccer matches mm -hmm. and uh and obviously it's a it's not a not a big crowd like with soccer but um when uh fans in orange come to watch your games and, and the tournament it's it reminds you of um you know, like su su a supportive group of people for for uh for sports and yeah it always give me a home feeling or something mm -hmm. yeah are they different in different environments? So, so like whether it's beach volleyball or indoor volleyball, do you still get that sort of same love from them? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And um, yeah, it's, it's just, uh, I think in the national indoor team, you played more yeah, in front of the home crowd, but in uh, beach volleyball, it was only once a year, I, th I think, that we, that we had uh, really uh, one tournament in, uh, for our home crowd. So I, I always was looking... Uh, very much forward to it, uh, especially with family and friends around. It, that's that's for me the main, and that and that gives the what Manon said maybe the home home feeling, the homecoming feeling. And uh, if you're traveling always and then uh, all parts of the world, and then you can one tournament you have at home, you stay uh, close to your family, and uh, uh, yeah, it's just a really a great feeling to play for uh, for the home crowd. Is, do you think there'll ever be a stage with the kids, uh, this is leading on to something by the way, where you think you might watch some home videos of when you, when you guys were players? Yeah, that's, that's something we would like to do. Yeah. Okay. But we so far we haven't no. done it yet. Maybe Milou is understanding it a bit by now, okay. but obviously Daniel's way too young. So. Right, so um, I've got some videos. Who would like to go first? Ladies first. Ladies first. I want you to tell me sort of how they make you feel, if they make you feel anything at all. But also, I'd be interested in uh, getting the other person's kind of opinion on them because I believe most of them at least are from before you were together. So let's give these ones a go. Let's start with... It's been a really, really long time. Because we are so long together. <laughs> so I think this one was from, from the... 2009 European Championship final yeah. where you were the MVP. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But well, we, we knew were, each other. We, we knew each other already. for four years. Already. We were not married yet, but. Oh, wow. Those are close ups. <laughs> this is finals against uh, Italy, yeah. I think. That wasn't such a. Yeah, great that, wasn't, match. that was what he said. It's the final. When was the last time you saw any of this footage? Oh, my God. This is. Years ago, I can I can remember. I think the last time I saw something was somebody that put something on YouTube of me, like a compilation of some actions. <laughs> and this is wow, well, it's crazy. But it's really nice to see it. Actually, it's it seems like a lifetime ago, you know. Especially now when when life changes that much with, uh, huh? with right. the family. Yeah, this is uh, Wooch, I think it was. I yeah. can't believe he sent me a video where. I know you got MVP, but you lost the game. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, yeah, it was it wasn't that bad. It's no problem. It's just nice to see the, the, well, me being on the court. You know, it's, it's happy memories. Yeah, happy memories. Even when we lost, it's a happy memory. Okay, next next video. Oof. Yep. 
Oh, wow. Yeah, that is really, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that is really a long time ago. You were like... When well, my first Olympics. Yeah, my first Olympics. So how did it feel when you got selected for that Olympic team then, Sydney 2000? Uh, you know, it, it, uh, the selection, uh, to be honest, was was already in an early stage, but the, I remember very well that we qualified because it was a hard struggle because we, uh, we as Netherlands, as the Netherlands, we had won the Olympics in Atlanta, 96. So we had a, yeah, a big, uh, almost a big burden to carry. How do you say it? Yeah. To, uh, and we were in trouble qualifying actually for Sydney. Uh, and and we, we managed to do it in the last tournament, the last possibility in France where we had to beat uh, uh, three teams to, to go to these Olympics. And when we finally did uh, qualify, we were, uh, our level increased a lot because there was a lot of pressure coming off. And uh, I think we, uh, yeah, we actually we, we played a pretty good Olympics, yeah. Too bad we lost in the quarters to uh, Yugoslavia that time. And they won the gold, yeah. Is the Olympics like the pinnacle for the both of you? Do you think the Olympics is the, the sort of the main shining light for, for volleyball as a sport and beach volleyball? I always had the ambition to, uh, to qualify. I missed out on a, a bunch of them. But um, yeah, I, but I never have regrets. You know, it's not that, um, um, yeah, I, I don't really have the mature feeling that uh, my career lacks uh, uh, attending the Olympics. Mm. But um, yeah, it would have been nice to also um, experience that, such a big worldwide event. And everybody is talking always about the Olympics, you know. How, yeah. do you, how do you look at each other's careers then? Do you, were you ever like critical of each other when it was going well, compliment, sorry, critical when it wasn't going well or, or, or complimentary when it was going well, or did you kind of keep them a little bit separate, like family life is here and career life is here? Uh, Manon is, I think Manon was more, could really easily uh, uh, switch between volleyball and private life or yeah. Uh, and I'm more more into the game, and I analyze a lot after a game. And uh, yeah, we sometimes were funny. I learned that uh, during uh, uh, during our relationship that uh, that I sh I should just shut up after a game and not talk. About it. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching all her games. When I was watching her games, and I had to say always like, "Yeah, you should do this. You should do that." And, she was like, okay, I, I'm already done. Uh, let's go out for dinner. We just, we just I'm went. Not the, the analyst, you know, the analyst. Uh, there was the coach in me already. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, that's probably the reason why you're doing so well at what you do now. But uh, did you have to say to him, Manon, you're like, you're not my coach. Can we just do something else, wow. please? Yeah, and sometimes I also, I, 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 I did like it, you know, like to, uh, to talk about it a bit, you know, but he can go really, he can dive deep into... Uh, okay, I, I switch on the lights because it's a little bit getting dark here. <laughs> nah, it's cool. Yeah, he's just right. getting uh, too far for me, you know? But, right. Um, right, while he's gone, you can say what you want. <laughs> <It's fine. laughs> I, but I do, I do uh, respect that, you know? In yeah. So, and, uh, but I, I think that's also why he's a, a great trainer, a great mm -hmm. coach. And I would never be, I'm, I'm more uh, like a... I play on what I feel, what I what I see at the moment, and obviously I also have to analyze and work on uh, the stuff that I can do better. So it's it's you can do without analyzing, mm. but uh, I could easily switch from my playing mode to you know like uh, private or family mode or whatever. Um, yeah, that's that's the difference between us. <laughs> and but I usually like. Uh, um, yeah, so switching switching subject like I uh, when people ask she's me about she's not into sports at all. Uh, uh, for me, it's all, it's always has been a mystery why she was so good at playing volleyball because she really? doesn't look any any volleyball match on TV. She doesn't look. Wow. She's not. I am. I'm a completely uh, sports freak. Like I, I like to watch all sports on television and. But she I never, she less. never... Uh, I don't, I also but don't miss volleyball. It's, it's all good. 
So did, did you say you don't you don't miss volleyball? I don't miss volleyball. No. How interesting. No, it was just such a big part of my life, and I, yeah, I, I didn't really know anything else. Mm. Obviously, I also did a lot of different things. But then, you know, when it was, when I decided that it was the end, I just switched it, and I, no, I never missed it. I think also for Manon, the transition from the from her career to let's say normal life. Uh, was a was an easy one i think mm. for her and you hear a lot of athletes struggling uh after their careers what from what and also for me it was uh, way harder i think than for manon <laughs> i'm really happy uh, that i found what i uh, a job like uh, what i'm doing now because i'm really happy with it but uh, it took some time mm. uh, do you think uh, do you think a lot of that is because you're a, because you're a sports person and because you're in that sort of rarefied air as the as the elite um it's being the master of your own destiny and being able to make your own decisions like when it's time to stop playing you make the decision not yeah, somebody you else also should be you also should be lucky a bit to make to be able to make the decision yourself because a lot of people are also forced to make a decision you know with an injury or maybe with a you didn't get the, the cut, you know. You're you're um, you're, you're not, not not part of the selection. Um, so at one point, yeah, I was lucky to make my own decision, and uh, at that moment, it was really hard, mm. really. But um, uh, yeah, after I just I, the only thing I can do is look back on a on a great career. That's what I think, and obviously, there's also some things that I missed out on, like Olympics or maybe a medal, uh, stuff like that. But overall, I think, you know, I find myself blessed that I was able to, yeah, to, to be doing such a great job, you know, and then it wasn't even feeling like a job, but it was a job in the end, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's mad to think of it as a job, isn't it? <laughs> Just yeah. absolutely crazy, traveling, traveling the world with a bunch of amazing people, yeah. achieving yeah. amazing things. Definitely. Okay, next next video time. This is unreal. World champs. This is, uh, quarter f this is the world champs in Holland, yeah. Uh, quarterfinal. Oh. No, not quarterfinal. Yes, quarterfinal, sorry. Quarterfinal. World champs 2015 in The Hague. Yeah, it was an amazing run, yeah. It's the Numeter backflip. <laughs> Self -named. Not, not my words. <laughs> no, other people. Not mine too, but I like them. This was against yeah, Heide, this, uh, Heide, Heide and Born. Born. Yeah. Heide, who is still playing, by the way. It's amazing that it's big feet like that can make such strong <laughs> 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 yeah. beach, uh, uh, beach volleyball feet. He's making a lot of uh, meters. You wish you, you, you wish you were that fast. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> hard to look at. Hard to look at. Like, oh yes. You'll never be that good. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's uh, the event that I will never ever forget in my life because it was a home crowd making the final at the World Champs. Also the way, of course, we lost the final, which was very uh, bitter, but um, therefore, therefore, maybe you will, I will remember it for the rest of my life, but it was, it was amazing um, atmosphere the whole week. The, the weather was good, which is uh not always uh, the case in holland uh, especially for for a long uh, period of time so uh, yeah full crowd and uh, i remember i stayed with manon and uh we stayed in uh, like a bed and breakfast airbnb airbnb, airbnb we, yeah we had a yeah we you were not staying in the hotel with all the other players no but, uh, we, we uh, no did our own apartment no kids yeah. yet so it's good times <laughs> 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 oh, oh, oh you didn't hear that, huh? No. No, no. It's English. We're talking English. Oh, yeah. Earmuffs, earmuffs. Oh, no. Did you hear that? No. Um, right. Okay. <laughs> I've got one. I've got one last video. Just let me find it. What on earth is going on here? Oh, this is a commercial. Oh this yeah. This is uh, yeah. our uh, our sponsor. It's uh, how do you say this in English? Yeah. Um. Uh, 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 companies that um, they take care of uh, the, the the funerals. The funerals, yeah. Undertaker. Yeah. Yeah, it's an undertaker, an undertaker company. And so, 
I'm about, I'm about to serve, I'm about to serve, uh, uh, yeah, because actually when it looks, it looks like we're playing Germany, but we're playing our other uh, team. So it's only Dutch players, but for the commercial, they made it like that. And I'm making an, uh, I'm doing serve, I'm making an ace and I'm watching the, the, the tribute stands, you know, to see if my dad's there, but there's an empty chair. Yeah, I'm not right now. And, it feels like a, and now you're laughing like this, you know, it's like a, Horrible script, but at that moment, you know, it seemed pretty, pretty okay. Was the ma main sponsor? Yeah. Oh my goodness me! I... The national television. Uh, like, it doesn't happen a lot, you know, with a volleyball uh, to have a commercial. I mean, there was me thinking. I mean, that is an amazing, like, super cool thing to to star in a commercial, like to be the one player that's selected. Yeah. But then you tell me it's for a funeral directors. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. <laughs> Again, though, that's that that's like quite a, a cool thing, isn't it? A lot of people ask me a lot at the time. A lot of people ask me if it was my dad playing what? that part. Was it? No. Oh, okay. No, that would have been weird, also. Yeah, that would have been so weird. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. I'll be, I'll be back. <laughs> no, no, you take your time. No worries. Number two. Ah, oh, goodness. Attempt. Try, yeah. Attempt number two. How do the how do the highs differ between indoor volleyball and beach volleyball? Are the highs still as high, or or is it just success is success? Uh, yeah, success is it's the same for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I mean, uh, uh, in maybe in in beach volleyball you you play every week in the summertime. You almost play every week a tournament. So most of the weeks there is always a. Um, a disappointment like mm. you, you you yeah or you win the tournament or you lose uh, some uh, somewhere along the road um but uh, you also have every week a chance to win a tournament i think it's a little bit different than indoors and and it feels and and, and the big difference is that you you're only with two players on the beach so yeah. it feels more like your own uh, your own achievement almost it's almost like a one against one if, well, that, if, if they serve you all the time, uh, it's like uh, you play almost by, of course, you play with your partner, but it's almost one on one. Well, that was what I was going to ask you then. Was one of your sort of factors in, in making the decision to go from one to the other? Because playing beach, you almost have to take, well, not almost, you do have to take more responsibility for yourself. Because with indoor, like the coach picks the team, the coach creates the roster, whereas mm -hmm. with beach, as you say, there's, there's just the two of you. You have to find the perfect synergy and then the coach. And then maybe you have to play with a little bit of an injury one week because if you don't play, then, you know, you don't win and you don't get any money and, and you've got all those decisions that you've got to make. So do you think the fact that you can take a little bit more ownership over your career is one of the reasons why you chose to be a beach player? Oh, yeah, definitely. And, uh, yeah, there are, there are more factors, like... Uh, but that's one of them. And... Uh, yeah, more, more, more ball contacts, more freedom on the court. You, you have a, you're only with two players on on the whole court, and you can more, you can play more on your um, intuition. Mm. You can, you can see the whole court and run the whole court down. It's, it's, uh, yeah, that's what's what I like the most. I think of the game. What do you think is more demanding on the body? I, I suppose both of you can answer. Uh, answer indoors for me. Okay. Yeah. But I had more problems yeah, um, yeah. With, uh, with beach volleyball, but maybe also because of the age, because I was yeah, older, yeah. I had more back problems. And yeah, I, I found it really hard to move in the sand compared to <laughs> when I had hard floor. Yeah. That's the thing, isn't it? You're so used to putting one foot in front of the other, and then all of a sudden the ground disappears from under you. Yeah. <laughs> like, they just rely on the uh, you know, automatic pilot. That was yeah. during volleyball, it was so easy. Like the more years you were playing, it was you could rely on your automatic pilot. But now with beach volleyball, and maybe also because of getting back after a um, um, pregnancy was mm. maybe harder. Uh, yeah, I found it really hard. Was that always the plan then, to go back after pregnancy, or did you just uh, think? So, well, I was like, okay, I'll just see how everything goes, um, like how I how I felt after after giving birth. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the plan actually was going back to indoor volleyball. Okay. But I always kind of had the dream, like, hmm, would it be, would be nice to just see how beach volleyball would turn out for me. 
and then I uh, I was called by um, Marlene van Eersel. She gave me a, a ring, and I was like, "Yeah, that's actually cool." You know, it's uh, it's quite an adventure, and we had really had to think about it because you know we also had a, a baby, a young daughter. Um, but um, yeah, I never regretted it. I just played for one year, one yeah, one year. But um, yeah, in the end, it was for me. It felt too hard to combine with family life and the struggles I had um, being physical, yeah. strong enough. And also like family wise, you know, it's, it's when you're away, you know, it's harder to take care of a kid, you yes. know, and yeah. for me, maybe it's easier than for Reinder. So, um, yeah, so the combination made me maybe decide to, to say, okay, it's been enough. <laughs> uh, right. So are you to serious question? Are you too competitive now with each other? You're more. <laughs> yeah, <I'm> more. <laughs> no. Okay. I'm not really. No. Okay. Sometimes I wish I was, but I'm. I'm. I'm kind of a atypical uh, athlete. Yeah. <laughs> pro athlete. Atypical pro athlete. Yeah. She doesn't even want to play ping pong with me. She doesn't. No way. Does that does that frustrate you though? Would you like the opportunity ah, to win yeah. sometimes or lose sometimes? Rainer, it frustrates Rainer. Yeah. Yeah, know, but, but, but she's no competition. I wish I oh. had it a bit more. But no, no, and that's also what I feel. So I just, uh, no, I, I prefer to do other things. I, I also started playing golf. But, oh, did uh, you? Well, a bit. He was playing golf, and I was like, okay, I need my, uh, my, uh, my license. Golf license. Okay. Who's the, who's the better player? Yeah, obviously. Yeah, yeah but it's, it's, uh, it's just not, uh, it's just not working between us because then I, <laughs> I try to coach her. He's again. analyzing it. Oh. You know? <laughs> we get only we get only uh, arguments and, all the time. And so. I can play for fun, you know. I, I just have my license to play for fun to enjoy the nature and uh, the, the weather, but he uh, doesn't even see it. So uh, I just see the ball in the hole. Oh, totally. <laughs> and do, do you do you talk to the ball when it's in the air as well? No. Oh, uh, I do. I talk to the ball. I'm like, yeah, just a little bit more. Go on, go on. Just bite, yeah, just bite, 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 bite. <laughs> <laughs> I talk to all the demons in my head. Oh, uh, of course. Uh, do you know, there'll be two kinds of people watching this, you know, like you'll, you'll have the one kind who are like, oh my God, like he's, he's a world-class coach and he's, he's just going to coach you and you don't want that and I can't believe it. And there'll be the other type of people are like, yeah, dude, just don't coach your wife. <laughs> no. So that's why we never play together and it's, 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 it's better. Right? Yeah, well, yeah. I think we will, we will find our When way. we get really old. The, so the thing with um, the thing with my girlfriend and I is I'm sports crazy and she's not she not really into sports at all. But the only sports we do together, she's better than me, and it's <sighs> so she's a we ski together um, and we swim together, and I'm a terrible swimmer and a terrible skier, and she's great at both. Like we could pick any other sport in the world, like any other sport, and I'd be like, yeah. I'd, but no, the only two we do are the two where she just annihilates me. And it, it's, it's good. It's good. Yeah, yeah, really good, mate. I really good. Glad you're relationship. Skiing is, yeah. skiing is a good one, actually. But you know, what it's been a while that we actually yeah, went on you, holiday. You would beat me easily. That's true. Just into sport. It's a good sport, though. You beat me in cooking as well. Yeah. Well, that's it. But that's good for him also. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Like, yeah, yeah. Where's it, it, my advantage? I'll case. be honest. <laughs> it, it very much sounds like you both win. Because yeah. of that. Right, guys. I am going to, to leave you to it because it is Monday evening and you finally got the kids to bed. Uh, so you can have a little bit of time to yourselves now. But thank you so much for having a chat with me. This has been absolutely lovely uh, see you guys on the other side in the meantime just stay safe look after yourselves and looking forward yeah me too me too see you later bye-bye bye-bye and that was manon and reindeer taking some time out of the exhausting schedule of being parents to a newborn just to let us know they're doing okay and taking a trip down memory lane and a lovely trip it was as well slightly different of course talking to a family but if you enjoyed it then make sure you watch the unscripted with giovanni giudetti and baja tokshoi if you haven't already we meet their little daughter as well so a really lovely episode that i hope you enjoy as much as you've enjoyed this one if you haven't already seen the ace space 
Space podcast is up and running. The volleyball podcast brought to you by CEV and myself, along with Matt Rogers from CEV and Olympian Kira Michael, are taking a little bit more of an in-depth view of these unscripted. So that is available wherever you get your podcasts now. So check it out along with all of the other episodes of the Ace Space. If this is the first unscripted you've watched, then head over to CEV's Instagram TV and YouTube channels. You can watch them on Facebook as well. We have got so many world-class athletes, both from the indoor gyms and the beach as well. And of course, we have a debate with James Fielder, not to be missed. Brilliant content to keep you going and help you pass the time while we wait for lockdown to be lifted. But until then, stay home, stay safe, look after yourselves and get in touch because you know I love hearing from you. But until next time, 